We're getting fired up with Cole Kubik. What's up, my man? So we're going to talk a little bit about this Auburn offense. He likes to laugh at me. We're going to talk about this Auburn offense. So beginning of the season, all these high expectations for Jared Stidham, Carryon Johnson, Cam Petway. Supposed to be this potent offense from Gus Malzahn. And the first three games, we didn't see it. 23.7 points per game average. Then they lose to Clemson, 14 to 6. From then on out, 48 points per game. What happened to this offense? Why the spark? Why the clicking? Well, there were definitely some changes made after the Clemson game. I think the coaching staff would tell you that. And I think from a philosophy standpoint, this team understood they needed to do more underneath in the passing game. They needed to do more to stretch the back end of defenses, to remove defenders from the box. And, and then you just go back to performance and execution. There were parts of that Clemson game that just were bad. Guys were losing one-on-ones. There was communication breakdowns. There were protection breakdowns. And I think just an understanding of what kind of an offense that they want to be. And sometimes, unfortunately, it's a wake-up call like that game against Clemson that forces you to take a step back and say, we have got to implement this part of our offense. We have got to get this person more involved. And let's be honest, the health of Carryon Johnson the last three weeks has made a dramatic difference in this offense. And I, I really, being at that game Saturday, watching him operate in that offense against Ole Miss, you really begin to feel like this offense, maybe even this team, is sort of circling around Carryon Johnson. And I sort of get the feeling that they'll go as far as he takes them. It's, if he stays healthy, continues to even improve, maybe even get more healthy and expand his role in that offense, the tricky part will be the offensive line because I felt like they had finally found five up front that they were going to stick with Lauren and go with and sort of let that group begin to gel. And then Mike Horton goes out of the game. And because of the way they've managed that line this year, when you lose one guy, that's sort of two position changes. So Austin Golson goes from tackle to guard and Prince Tegan comes back in. So now it's not just lose left guard, insert left guard, it's lose left guard two guys in two different positions. Now they've moved a lot, so they have an understanding of how that works, but that to me will be really something to watch moving forward. And you go back to the injuries, Carryon Johnson expected to be close to 100%. He's been about 90%, but the He told me 95 after the game. 95, okay, so we're at 95%. We might be at 100 this weekend. So the big question, Gus Malzahn has been talking about not wanting to put Cameron Petway in, that they tried this philosophy of getting these guys some carries, but sitting these guys out and helping them to rest, how does this, I guess, help the team in terms of spreading the ball out offensively? I think, well, first off, what you've seen is Cam Petway, Malik Miller have really come in and done some different things to help this offense. Uh, you've got other backs that have shown they can help offset some of the load for Carryon Johnson. And, and Carryon Johnson has had injury problems the last few years, so durability is a point of concern right. with him. Now, I think physically his body can take it. He's had more non-contact injuries than he, I mean, a nagging high ankle sprain and then a hamstring. Mm -hmm. So you know, he's just somebody who needs to be healthy and stay healthy so we can see how effective he'll be long-term. But I think you've seen also Ryan Davis has sort of come into this offense. He's someone with a little motion underneath that they hit off the zone read. He can be sort of a quick outlet that serves as a running back. And then Cam Petway's doing some different things. Malik Miller, Chandler Cox is still there, can carry the football at times. So I think there's enough firepower that now you sit back and wait for Cam Petway to be as close to 100% as he can get in season before you bring him back. And then that can be sort of your one-two punch down the home stretch. And I want to know from your standpoint as a former player behind the scenes, there's a lot that we don't necessarily know. But the, the coaches switch places. You put Chip Lindsay up in the box. Herb Hand comes down to the field. Ultimately, in terms of that communication, I mean, what really pushed this offense to that next level? Well, I think the efficiency, the accuracy, the understanding of Jared Stidham, mm -hmm. having a healthy and is this coming from a coaching standpoint? Everybody better understand. Well, yeah, it's, it's coaches and it's players. You have to be on the same page, and right. there has to be there has to be harmony with everybody. So the coaches can have 20 different plays that they want to run if the players don't have an understanding of how to execute those plays against certain looks, what to run off of those plays if you get a certain defense. It's not going to work. You're not going to be able to get going. So I think a feel, an understanding of where they want the offense to go. I personally believe Chip Lindsey's more comfortable in the booth. Mm -hmm. So him going up, I believe, helped this offense sort of take off. And I think kind of sitting back and saying, we've got to give our quarterback a little bit more help, whether it's quick outlets, whether it's variations in the run game. 
whether it's making some changes along the offensive line and all those things sort of happen. Okay, you got to cover Auburn this past weekend. What is something you learned about this team that you didn't know going into this football game against Ole Miss? Uh, the confidence that Kevin Steele has in this defense is greater than I even really imagined. Mm -hmm. uh, just hearing him talk about this unit, explain this unit, uh, brag about this unit, he has so much confidence in what this group's able to do. And I think you see that by him really not over coaching this group. He just get, he wants them to get lined up and then go play ball. And hearing him speak on that group and some of the players talking about him, I think really that's what I came away with is what we mentioned earlier, that Carryon Johnson is going to be the guy for this Auburn team and offense. And that defense, the, the coaching staff has a boatload of confidence in that group. All right, awesome. He's Cole Kubik. We'll be dapping it up together in uh, Athens, Georgia this weekend as Georgia gets ready to take on Missouri. I'll be there for SEC Nation. What does dapping it up mean? Dapping it up. Looking forward to it. Give it to me. Ooh, ooh.